So you're gonna get a Ryzen 5000 CPU, but what motherboard is right for you? Do you want an A520, a B450, a B550, or an X570 board? What are the features that you're looking for, and does it matter whether or not you have a 5600X or a 5950X? What about overclocking? Don't worry, I've evaluated all of the motherboards and come up with the best price to performance in every bracket, and that's coming up right now. Hi, welcome to PC Builder. I'm Jason. I am really excited about this video as it represents an absolute ton of work reviewing all of the 500 series AM4 motherboards just ahead of the Ryzen 5000 launch so we can tell you what the best motherboard is for the 5600X, the 5800X, the 5900X, and of course the 5950X. So if this is the kind of content that you like, we're still a new channel, it helps out a lot. If you would like the video, subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notified when we release new content because this is the kind of content that we want to produce. Stuff that takes all the technical mumbo jumbo, mashes it down, and gives you the best price of performance in your builds. With that, let's get right into it. Let's first start off by talking about what chipset to focus on. Now, while the boards in the A520, the B450, the B550, and the X570 will all support Ryzen 5000, most of the recommendations that I'm going to make are going to be B550 boards and a couple X570s sprinkled in at the very high end. The reason for this is simple. The A520 boards, they're low end boards. They lack features like overclocking and PCI 4.0, and frankly, they're best suited to low budget builds for third gen Ryzen. The B450 boards, they're older, they have weaker features, and they're not gonna get the necessary BIOS updates to run the 5000 series until January, 2021. So if you, if you own a B450 and you wanna wait, great. But if you wanna buy a new board, I wouldn't recommend B450. And with the exception of the ultra high end, the B550 boards, they completely outshine their X570 counterparts in price and performance with a couple notable exceptions, again, at the very, very high end. Second, let's just talk about whether or not the BIOS on the motherboard is going to work out of the box with your Ryzen 5000 CPU. Now, listen, if you're watching this six months from now, the answer is probably yes. Go ahead and skip ahead to the motherboard recommendations. Have a great day. But if you're an early adopter, this is going to be a critical issue. Now, AMD advises that in order for the motherboard to at least post and allow you to get into the BIOS with a Ryzen 5000 CPU, you're gonna need support in the BIOS for at least a GSA version 1.0.8.0. That's right there. That's gonna allow you to post, get in the BIOS, and from there, using a thumb drive with the latest BIOS downloaded from the manufacturer's website, you'll be able to further update the BIOS to something that will fully support the Ryzen 5000 CPU series. Of course, if your motherboard doesn't come with a BIOS that supports this, then you've got two options to update it. The first is you make sure you buy a motherboard with BIOS flashback. That's easy. Then you can just use that USB thumb drive without a CPU whatsoever, plug it in and update the BIOS immediately. The second option is much more difficult. That means you need a Ryzen 3000 CPU laying around that you can stick into the board and update to the latest version and then pull that CPU out and then put in your Ryzen 5000 CPU. How many of you have a spare 3000 series Ryzen CPU sitting around, probably not many. So luckily, all of the Gigabyte, all of the MSI, and most of the ASUS motherboard B550 lineups include BIOS flashback. Unfortunately, only the most expensive ASRock motherboards do. But because ASRock has one of the best price to performance B550 boards, I reached out to their North American sales division and they confirmed that as of August 24th to the 27th, all of their boards have had the update that support a GSA 1.0.8.0. And if by chance you pick up a board that has the older BIOS, that they're gonna do a program where if you ship them the motherboard, they will go ahead and update it for you and ship it back to you. So at least you should have that peace of mind and you won't get stuck with a board that you can't use. Here's how I rank the motherboards, since most of them come with a similar number of M.2 and SATA ports. Number one, I looked at the VRM testing data, mostly from Hardware Unbox, amazing, but really, really long. 
uh, B550 and X570 series. While the testing was done with 3000 series CPUs, the 5000 series have the same TDP, so the data should be roughly equivalent. And I did look at overclocking the CPUs on these using that data, but because 95% of you are gonna be just fine setting performance boost overdrive and calling it a day, it didn't factor in as much. The next thing I looked at is I looked at the rear panel connectivity, including USB 2.0, 3.1, 3.2, and Type-C ports. Also looked at the LAN. Uh, no real weight given to 2.5 since one gigabit a second is gonna be absolutely fine for the majority of you. And also did look at rear IO uh, for the audio as well. Speaking of the audio, I gave particular weight uh, to the motherboards that have a 1200 series audio codec or better. And I did look at the audio implementation itself. Now remember, if you're ever going to plug in an audio device such as a headset or a speaker with a three and a half millimeter jack, that's this thing right here, right? This is a headset. If you're a gamer, you probably plug this in on a regular basis, especially if you do like competitive shooters and things of that nature. You really should then care about the audio codec that you're getting and the overall audio quality. And a pro tip. If you do have an audio codec with a 1200 series or higher, then always use the front case connectors rather than the rear panel connectors because the chipset has a specific feature to give great headset audio using those connections. Finally, I did consider some miscellaneous features such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, the number of fan headers. Not as much weight given because for 15 bucks, you can add Wi-Fi Bluetooth to any motherboard, either through a USB dongle or a PCIe card. And then of course, you know, CPU fan headers uh, or fan controllers rather, they go for about 10 bucks. So again, less weight added to that. Okay, so let's start with the absolute best price and performance motherboard for these CPUs. And that is the ASRock B550M Pro 4. Now it's a micro ATX motherboard. The MSRP on this is $115, but frankly, it's been selling for about $95 for quite a while. Sometimes it pops up to 105, may even go lower. Uh, it offers a total of three M.2 slots, two standard slots, including a PCI Gen 4 and a PCI 3, as well as a Wi-Fi M.2 key. Uh, note that while it includes the antenna mount uh, on the motherboard itself, it doesn't actually include Wi-Fi with it. The rear panel is pretty impressive and it, and I'll just flip to it here, it gives two USB 2.0, four USB 3.1, and two USB 3.2 ports, including a Type-C connector, along with Realtek one gigabit LAN. Uh, one other thing to note that while most boards in this range sport an 800 series audio codec, the B550M Pro 4 has a pretty impressive 1200 series audio codec. In VRM testing, it handled six, eight, 12, and even the 16 core uh, chips at stock speeds. Although it did get a little toasty overclocking the 16 core, got up to 103 uh, degrees Celsius if I recall, that's not something that I would feel comfortable doing. So if you are looking to overclock it, I would just limit it to the six and eight core chips, maybe a moderate overclock on the 5900X. It has a total of six fan headers, and a really intelligent PCIe layout that um, that I got to tell you, it, compared to the other motherboards, again, it just makes a lot of sense. You can actually use all of these slots in here. It's really laid out intelligently. Next up is the AORUS B550M Pro. Now, honestly, this board MSR P's at 129. It's been consistently selling for around 115, though right now it's back up to 129. I'm really just listing this board as an option because it does offer BIOS flashback. So it will work out of the box as long as you have a USB thumb drive. So given that it's the same board basically as the ASRock B550M Pro 4, let's just go over a couple of differences. Though one difference, may this may or may not matter to you, rear IO panel, it has two more USB 2.0 slots. It also has the full suite of audio connectors back here, if, you, if that's important to you. Same though on the LAN, same on the high-speed USB connectivity. It does have an audio 1220 codec, an ALC 1220 codec, and because it is a higher codec than the 1200 series, it does include 
support for things like high impedance uh, headphones, which is really fantastic. Then in terms of the PCIe layout, really the, the only difference is that whoever laid this out, uh, it frustrates me because you end up with this slot here being totally unusable when, once you put the graphics card in, which is going to cover both these slots. It's just, I don't get it. Um, in the VRM testing, it fared about as well as the ASRock Pro 4. No major differences. So again, I think you'd be looking to put, you know, all the way up to 5950X at stock. And if you want to overclock, I'd limit it to the 6 and 8 quart chips, the 5600X and the 5800X, maybe the 5900X with a lot of airflow on it uh, and a mild overclock. Total of fan, five fan headers. Um, really, that's all you need to know about this motherboard. Okay, next up, we've got the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Elite. This is our first full ATX size motherboard. And frankly, this is just a great board. It MSRPs, or actually it's retailing right now for about $150. It's I've seen it actually lower than that. And this is a board that for $25 less than the B550 Tomahawk, it beats the pants off the Tomahawk in pretty much every way imaginable. It has Realtek 2.5 gigabit uh, LAN on it. Let's just see the rear panel here. It's got an absolute ton of connectivity. It's got eight total USB ports. Two of them are USB 2.0. Then we've got four type A's that are 3.1. And we've got two 3.2's that are type A. I will note it doesn't have a USB-C on here. So if that's something that you really just can't gotta get, you're probably gonna find another board. It has eight fan headers. And the great thing about this is if you look at the VRM testing data, even when overclocking uh, something like the 5950X or the 3950X in this case, the temperatures are absolutely fine. I would overclock any chip on this board and feel really great about it. Again, just, just really, really fantastic motherboard. I think that, I think that you know, a lot of people are, were down on Gigabyte because well, their X570 was okay, but their B450s were crap. But they've really turned out a great product here on the B550. And frankly, at the price point, if you're looking for a full-size ATX motherboard, particularly with enhanced audio and other things, this is just a really great, great pick. All right, finally, and I swear to you, I'm not sponsored by Gigabyte. I swear to you. Just they turned out a great B550 series after falling on their face on their B450 series. Uh, we've got the a we've got the b550 aorus pro um, this is a motherboard that retails for 170 dollars i think right now it's selling for 169 there is a wi-fi enabled version called the ac version uh usually find it for five or ten bucks more this motherboard is an upgrade in every way over the elite uh, again it sells for the same same price as the tomahawk too and it just kills the tomahawk in terms of features it's got better audio. It's got ALC 1220. It's got a total of 12 USB ports. It has three Type A's. Uh, I'm sorry, three USB 3.1 Type A. It's got two USB 3.2 Type A and a Type C USB 3.2, in addition to six uh, 2.0 ports. So this is you, you. I don't even know how you'd use all this connectivity. It's also got the full suite of audio outputs, two and a half gig Realtek LAN. It's got eight fan headers. And in the VRM testing data that did, this is, I believe, the best performing board that they looked at uh, in terms of thermal temps overclocking the 16 core 3950X, which is going to be the equivalent of the 5950X coming up. So you can do pretty much anything you want on this, on this particular board. And you're going to just, I think, have a great experience with it. Okay, so I just want to make a note about some, you probably like, what about this motherboard that I'm so excited to hear about? You're not even mentioning it. I want to know about it. Well, I looked at all of them in the B550 series, quite honestly, and the the Gigabyte boards and the ASRock board, they just really lead the pack in price to performance. Now that's as of prices of the filming of this video. I'm certain with Black Friday coming up, with the holiday season coming up, with after Christmas sales, you know, you're looming that the prices are going to continue to change. So my recommendations would would probably change as well. 
just so that you can keep current, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the spreadsheet that I use to evaluate all the boards, including all the VRM testing data. It's got all the information about the VRMs, the USB ports. I put this all on a single spreadsheet. I'm going to leave this down, a link to it down in the description, including the current day price. So if you get in there six months from now and you say, hey, I really want uh, this board is on super sale. Where did it rank? You can at least look at the boards I recommended and where this board was in terms of price and get some idea of where it might fall. But you'll note that I didn't recommend any MSI boards. I really tried. They just don't have the value and price to performance on the B550 series. A little disappointed. And I am going to recommend some uh, ASUS boards in just a moment. So let's jump into that. Okay, the boards I've outlined so far should cover like 98.7% of you. So for the other 1.3% of you that need something really niche, I'm just going to mention in passing a couple of boards here. So number one, if you're looking for a creator board that has ECC memory support and built-in Thunderbolt 3, point, uh, 3 ports, then there is the Gigabyte Vision for $260 US. It's, I mean, it's a fantastic motherboard uh, for creators, specifically designed for creators. I'm not going to go over all the features. I would simply rec point you in that direction and, and, and let you rip there. Then if, for those of you who either want like SLI support, which is going away, but more, more than likely PCI, uh, PCIe 4.0 M.2 slots, you want at least two of them, you want one from the chipset and one from the motherboard, then let me give you a couple of other options in the X570 range. The first is the Gigabyte X570 ARS Ultra, $290. Equally good is the ASRock X570 Tai Chi, um, $290, I believe this one includes uh, includes Wi-Fi. And then of course the Asus ROG uh, Crosshair 8 Kiro X570 motherboard. These are all really fantastic motherboards. They just happen to be stupid expensive. This one's $360. But if you're looking for an absolute premium features uh, in terms of PCIe 4.0 support, most people don't need it. But if you're in that 1.7%, these are great boards for you. All right, that's going to do it for our best Ryzen 5000 series motherboards. Hey, let me know in the comments if you'd love me to do a similar series, but for the 3000 series, especially since they're going to be discounted more than likely coming up Black Friday and everything. And of course, we've got the four core Ryzen 3100. And if the 3300X ever materializes that, that CPU as well. I'd love to do a series on the, the that includes all of the boards, B450, A520 included with the X570 and the B550 series. So if that's interesting to you, let me know down in the comments. Also, what motherboard do you think you want to buy now after seeing the series? Is there a motherboard that you're like, no, Jason, you're wrong. I think this one's better. Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. So that's going to do it for this one. Remember, please help us out. Like the video subscribe, share it with your friends, keep the love coming, and we'll catch you on the next one.